Hello everyone and welcome to the San Diego real estate and zombie apocalypse. We're witnessing it live and you're witnessing Mo, the Gnostic warrior, live here for this walk and talk in San Diego. I'm going to take you on a little tour, mix it up a little bit and show you kind of what's going on in my neck of the woods here in what we call downtown San Diego. I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with this part of the world, but it's in Southern California at the southern most tip of California, right near the Mexican border. And what not a lot of people know is that we're going through some major times here as far as economic crisis, a real estate crisis. And also, along with that, there's also a homeless crisis. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to the Gnostic Warrior. I'm going to give you a little trip, and uh, we're going to basically see kind of what's going down with the real estate, give you a little tour of the streets here, and then I'm going to show you kind of some of what's going on with the homeless. Wish me some luck. It gets dangerous as well. So it's not that I'm afraid. It's sometimes people are crazy. Um, they're mentally able, disabled, uh, they have issues, so sometimes you have issues, but for the most part, during the day, you're pretty much cool, but wish me luck, and I'm going to kind of take you on a tour down through these uh, areas where the homeless are and so forth, and this is just, again, downtown San Diego, I'm off Ash and F Street, near 9th, and I'm going to kind of take you down to where people work and so forth and then right now I'm going to be going by a camp right here on the side so again this is just how it's happening right now so how you doing man yeah So again, there's a lot of people really they get homeless because of, you know, drug use and so forth. And um, that leads to mental illness is if you've seen my videos, you know, when you're doing methamphetamine, you're doing heroin and then you're living unhealthy, you develop fungal infections. And I believe that as well causes these these issues. So you could see right here there's there's homeless encampments and then also one right here that I just walked past. I'm going across here on 8th Street. There's not much of any business activity. It's literally, I would say 75% of the people you'll see on the street right now are essentially homeless. So you'll see all uh, right here. There's bikes, no one down here. You see that? Okay, and then I'm gonna turn over here and show you basically what's happening down this side of the street. You'll see the sirens coming. This is basically every day, all day. On both sides of the street, you have them camping out right there. And you can see again, I mean, maybe 90% of what you're seeing on the street here in San Diego downtown um, are homeless. So this is basically what I call the San Diego real estate and zombie apocalypse happening and it's uh, pretty sad to to witness and see kind of what's going on you know and as they're adding in the different moratoriums that we have right now across the country right so you have I think Biden just in introduced a moratorium uh, until June I believe that you know they can't kick anybody out of their homes and so forth so this is exactly kind of what we're seeing. And again, I'm coming up to 7th Street and F Street. As you can see, this is essentially downtown San Diego. This is the richest district here in San Diego, okay? So you have basically all the, the kind of the gaslight district, what they call it. These are all the, the various bars and the restaurants. And then you have all these various high rises around here basically kind of 
skyline. I mean, these, just so you know, those are million dollar, <laughs> million dollar condos right there. That's no joke. All surrounding right here and up there and also up there. And then what you're going to notice too is there's people already looking at me right now and um, kind of trying to yell at me and stuff as far as the homeless, which I'm used to. Um, that happens with normal people on the street. If you've <laughs> been with me on my walk and talks, right? The, the crazy liberals being controlled by the inner parasite, the fungal parasite, which when you're on the street, they're eating out of garbages, they're eating crap food, they're doing drugs, they're living, you know, dirty. So that's why that creates that. So again, look at here, no one. So basically what they do in certain areas, they, they clean it out, they don't allow them, as you'll see here as well, going down that way, there's no one, one person and then maybe some security down there, okay, in the yellow. So this is basically what you see, no business going on at all. And again, right there is where I just walked by where all the, the homeless are essentially everywhere right there. Okay, so it's interesting that at the same time that this is happening, real estate's booming. It's, there's a real estate just boom going on right now, just like a, a tidal wave values are going up in San Diego but at the same time no one is occupying you know a lot of these commercial properties down here you know essentially look at this guys not one consumer walking down downtown there's one way down there but these are businesses all around here I would say multi-billion dollars of real estate commercial real estate here and not one person is visiting any of these places to do business. And I'm, right now it's uh, 12 o'clock guys, noon in San Diego, California on a Tuesday. So that's why I'm calling this the San Diego real estate and zombie homeless apocalypse. Cause at the same time, the homeless are taking over and then they're also causing havoc just like they are in every other city around the nation. Okay, so this is happening basically everywhere like in san francisco they're defecating in the streets or walking in people's yards all around here are basically people's homes so what you have is you have them staying here and then they're going out from these areas and then they're walking into people's neighborhoods like you have san diego state university that's literally just a couple miles from here and all those students they rent homes all around here you know, and then all this while, all these homeless are essentially walking into their yards and stealing them and going into their houses. There's a serial killer on the loose right now. Okay, again, look at this, guys. All these rest places. I'm not making this up. This is 12 o'clock noon, right? Look at this. Amazing. Down here as well, there's no one. Look behind me. You know, you see cars, but really, you know, I'm walking in the middle of the street right now. Just so you know, guys, I'm in the, the middle of downtown Gaslight District, San Diego uh, at noon. I'm walking in the middle of the street. Hopefully uh, I don't get hit. I'm just kind of showing you no one's in any of these, no patrons in any of these businesses, right? There's a car coming behind me, so I'll get out, but this is kind of, you could never do this pre-COVID, right? Shut down, shut down, shut down. So, again, I wanted to take you guys. Hey, thank you for tuning in. How's it going? My name is Mo, the Gnostic Warrior. I'm on a live walk and talk in San Diego, downtown California. Hitting 5th and F Street now. Shut down, right? behind me boarded up. They got to board things up so people don't break through the, the glass. So you could see here, these are all shut down. You have a fence around that business. Over here, we have some stuff going on. Down here, you have the outdoor eating, right? Where people will eat. There's no one eating there. I don't see anybody eating at all right now. I'm trying to be cool and not get too many people on video that don't want to be on video or on camera. But again, look at this. Shut down. 
Uh, do you want to rent this? Why don't you call this and just ask them how much they're, they're leasing this for? And I guarantee you it's ridiculous still. Because they're just like in La La Land. Because, you know, they have mortgages to pay. So, again, shut down. All right here. As they're building. This is how crazy it is. You know, this is a multi-billion dollar, or billion, million dollar project being built right now as everything else is pretty much empty. As you can see. So there's a difference in talking about it and then really kind of showing you what's really going on, even when they open it up, you know, the restaurants in downtown and business. There's no one here. Sorry about that. Again, I, I thought I had this turned off my phone. <laughs> hey, say where you're from, guys. Let me know in the comments what's happening in your city, what you're seeing with your businesses and also with the, the homelessness. And if you're seeing similar places at noon, like this place would have been pretty much just packed, right? The whiskey girl. Not a single person is here. Not one person. You know, we're talking, you know, as far as the mortgage or the, the lease on that place, a corner, we're here on, I forget what's, oh, 5th and G Street. That's probably $50,000 a month just for rent. Okay, so, you know, $50,000 a month, they got to literally, maybe even more. You know, so, again, I want to kind of take you guys down and, and show you a little bit what's going on and also try not to get too many people that don't want to be on video on video. So here is, you'll see that's again, downtown right here. You see all the high rises. A lot of those are residential, the, the big ones. You'll see them over there as well. Right here. You know, there's again, there's some people walking around, but very, very few people. And I'd say, you know, when you get really downtown near the businesses, you know, there's less homelessness, but, you know, no one's buying anything. They look like they're basically people that are working here, you know, at restaurants, kind of walking in between their jobs or just people, you know, fixing <laughs> their cars. Again, this is the most richest district in San Diego. You know, this is where everybody goes. You know, so I wanted to take you guys, the Gnostic Warrior community down here while I'm down here because I'm working, just went to a crazy, crazy house. Again, here's another place that's pretty much closed, nothing going on. This is called the world famous Tin Row. All right, so these places were always jamming for years. It's been here, I think, 70 years or so or more right and there is basically no one at this place all right so guys we are going to hit crazy times this next year you know once these moratoriums end that you know the various you know governors like governor gloria has announced and then also biden the federal moratoriums on these foreclosures that's when the foreclosures are going to happen and that's when values are going to plummet so i right now i believe we're in a, a big massive bubble so you know this bubble would coincide with you see there's there's no one in these commercial properties no one's working no one's paying rent no one's paying their mortgage yet values are going up as as the people that have a little money are are gobbling up what properties are there so it's creating this a bubble effect so if you look at the charts, whether it's in San Diego, whether it's in San Francisco, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Miami, we're at the top of this bubble, literally, right up here. And they keep driving it even higher and higher as COVID is hitting, no one's working, values are going up, and then no one's at these businesses. It's a fucking insanity. You know, and I consider some of these people that are, you know, buying these homes are fucking zombies. You know, excuse my language. But again, you know, I got to also be careful um, where I'm at here because of what's going on. Oh, I'm not filming you. I'm filming me. Okay. Yeah, no worries, man. So anyways, 
like I said, I got to be careful because I got to film me and not other people. I just had a guy thinking that I was filming him and because my camera is facing that way, right? So uh, there was a couple guys right there, just so you know. There was a, a brother across the street and then also one right in front of me and he was shaking his head pointing at me right now and they were big guys, okay? And I saw him and as I was talking to you, he was looking at me and you couldn't see him. So I'm walking up and he's looking at me, talking to me and shaking his head violently at me right now. So what I do in those situations is I don't ignore, I acknowledge the truth. I'm not videotaping you, man. You know, I'm videotaping myself and I just kept going. He kept talking to the side of my head right now. You know, and I just made sure he wasn't on my, that I wasn't scared and then, you know, he's not on my ass and we're all good, right? So that's kind of how it works when you're around people that are a little mentally deranged. You, want to, you don't want to let them know that you're scared and then you don't want to get crazy with them. So there's this weird dynamic where you almost want to let them know you're crazy too and you know what you're doing. And then you're also not trying to do anything to them or take advantage of them. So it's a simple thing, but it's also kind of dangerous. You see, I'm by myself literally right here. Look at this, guys. All right, and there's all kinds of, of course, crime happening because of this, right? So imagine if those two guys just came over here and said, hey, you know, even though I'm on video, shit could have went down. And that's what's happening and people got to worry about. So I'm going to be a little more careful where I point my camera, even when I'm pointing it at me. So people don't think that I'm videotaping them. All right. And keep in mind, some are criminals that are wanted by the law. So, you know, some are crazy, but also a lot of people are just what I had said right now. And I also have a couple others that are doing it right now to me on the other side of the street. So I'm thinking this isn't a good area. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to get also too turned around because I want to figure out where my car was, <laughs> right? I don't want to get lost. And I remember that. So my remember my, my van, guys, it's on 9th and F Street, okay? So if I get lost or something happens, right now I'm on 2nd and Market Street. Again, you could see virtually no one out. That's all residential right here. Okay. These are basically commercial on top of residential. Those are all re big residential million dollar suites up there. Those will be overlooking the San Diego Harbor. So when you're downtown, you know, so those are usually, but again, no one out right now. This is the little Ralph's restaurant I'm going by. So again, I'm calling it, we're in a real estate bubble. In 2021, I believe, at least at the end of the year, we're gonna start seeing, once these moratoriums end, we're gonna really see, you know, the foreclosures start, the mortgage delinquencies, and then also the homelessness get worse and worse. So I wanted to show you guys kind of in, in real time rather than just talk about it. Thank you again for, for tuning in to the Gnostic Warrior, everybody. My name's Mo, and I actually, know what I'm talking about a little bit. I actually sold real estate uh, for several years a couple decades ago. Yeah, and when I was in my 20s, early 30s, I sold real estate up in the mountains in Big Bear. And, you know, I know a thing or two about real estate. I manage real estate agents. And then I also ran a mortgage forum when the last crisis, real estate crisis happened in 2007, 2008, when we had all those other foreclosures and the same thing happened. We were in a bubble, just like right now. It goes like this, real estate. So if you're smart, you don't buy in a seller's market, which we're in right now, because we're at the top of a bubble, that the, the values are way up there. You know, but what happens, buyers, you know, and people, you know, human nature is we want to get in on the action. We don't want to lose out on that house. We want to get the American dream 
before we lose out. And then all these real estate agents that really don't know anything about nothing, they just want to make some money, right? They're not really advisors or anything. You know, they, they hype it up. You know, you got to buy, you got to buy. It's always a great time, which that, of course, is bullshit. And this is a perfect example of it. We're literally in the middle of an apocalypse, real estate apocalypse. No one's working. Everybody has a moratorium and then everybody's buying, right? It's just like, it's, it's insanity. So once these moratoriums end, all these people that bought at the top of the market are gonna be left holding the bag, right? And then of course we're gonna see, look at this. I'm at Front Street and Market Street, guys. This is actually Market Street. All right, I'm just gonna walk across the, I'm just gonna, you know, jaywalk because no one's here anyway. No one's this way. No one's that way. This is Market Street. Noon. In San Diego. Hello? Anybody at the market? Billions of dollars going by every day. Hello? Yeah. And go buy a home right now. That's really wise. Look at this thing. That thing goes up and up and up and up to the top. The higher you get, the more expensive it gets because you have a better view, right? Oh, man. And then literally you saw half a mile down the road that I just walked from. It's just literally homeless everywhere. And they go all over here. And, of course, they pee and stuff. But this is all clean. You know, they clean everything every day in the morning. So right now in noon, of course, everything's clean. But in the morning, there's a bunch of pee and crap everywhere. But they clean it. And they do a good job, for the most part, down here keeping it away. But, you know, the purpose I wanted to show people that there's no one down here. Look behind me. There's no business happening, right? No one's making money. And then real estate is going through the roof. You know, so we're seeing one of the hottest real estate markets ever right now. You know, I saw that if you guys watched one of my walk and talks recently, I had a home across the street from me that was put on the market and it literally sold in one day. Multiple offers. You know, just like it was like a feeding frenzy. Just every two minutes someone was going by to, to look at the property because there's not a lot of inventory right now so that there are people that have money that can buy so it's creating this kind of artificial bubble where the values are, are going up right so this I contend will be ending as we we hit to 2021 when these moratoriums end again this is more like there, you see these big old buildings right here. This is kind of like the, the, maybe I'd say like the Beverly Hills of downtown. You know, they actually have private security kind of roaming around. I just saw a guy checking me out. He looked like military. You know, so what they'll do, you know, these places is they'll have a few guys that roam around and they look like normal guys, but they're security. And then they also keep the place clean. So, I see the security industry getting huge, especially private security. You know, and if people want to live in places like this, you know, they're going to have to, you know, start being more secure, more safe. Just the other day, I had someone steal um, packages off my, my front doorstep, and I've never had an issue ever. You know, and I have cameras, and the guy came up. Of course, he had a mask on, right? So... You know, this guy comes in and uh, basically walks on my porch and he takes our, our Amazon packages. And that's like, you know, low level crime and, you know, what a lot of guys are doing. And what's interesting, I saw a car go down our street prior to him coming up to our, our house. It was, uh, he had a, a hat on, he had a mask on and he had a backpack on and it was about midnight. But prior to that, we saw a gold Impala drive by. And this same car I've seen before, 
because I'm always walking, right? So I know my surroundings, I know my neighborhood. So what I think these guys are doing is they live nearby and they case the neighborhoods driving and they're blacked out in Paula with the windows tinted looking for packages on people's doorsteps. And then they, they basically make a note of it. And then depending if there's cameras, like we have and we have signs out and letting people know their security they they wait to to strike like i'd said they came at midnight so <clears throat> made me think of an idea to make money some type of like drop box or something for people that you like bolt outside your door because i think the you know the amazon thefts are going to get more and more and more so you'll see again there'll be like here Meridian hair designers right here. There's there's no one here. It's apparently open, right? Again, these these leases must cost you know fifty thousand dollars, let alone the employees and all the different bills that they they have to to pay. So again, here's a building right here for lease, right? And again, no one really out, as you could see. Look all around me. Except people working, like these guys right here painting. So this is pretty much common. And then I'll look back behind me and look right here, barely, barely anybody. Right, so this is it, guys. And it's not gonna get better. Look at down here. No one to be found. Again, it's noon in San Diego. I'm walking. Across the street here. So, as you can see, in my neck of the woods, things aren't looking good. You know, you do have parts of the economy here that are moving, of course. You know, there's the essential parts of the economy, the, the various workers. You have like the, the postal annex, the postal the liquor stores, there's a Ralph's over there. That's pretty much the, busy, the busiest stores, you know, because people need to eat. And then they have, of course, we have social systems in place such as, you know, food stamps and welfare that allows people to eat, you know? So even people that don't have nothing, they can, you know, get something from these stores. So those types of places will always have people, you know, patronizing <clears throat> and working at and so forth. But for the most part, here, I'm not going to go by this construction zone. Here, I'm going to go over here, actually. But um, there's some dude that's kind of checking me out. Hopefully, I don't have an issue with it. And again, thank you guys for tuning in. Say where you're at and, again, what's going on in your area of the woods and what's going on with your real estate, what you think if we're in a bubble or not. Because that's exactly what I believe we're in. So yeah, so, dude right behind me was like looking at me and laughing. Yeah, you gotta have patience too. You can't take things personal, you know, cause you know, if you think you're a tough guy and some crazy dude laughs at you and you take it personal, you're you're stupid because they just have a mental issue. So I don't mind when crazy people say things to me and when I'm down here and they're obviously crazy or they're laughing at me. I never take it personal. I always know that they have a mental issue. And uh, it's kind of funny to me, but it's also sad because I know what's, I feel I know what's going on with these people and what's wrong. And it usually starts with a fungal infection as a result of taking drugs and living unhealthy and they lose their mind. And I believe they eventually go on the street. I just saw a young gentleman, must have been 30 years old, he had tattoos, but he looked like he was just starting to lose his mind. He was the guy I said, what's up to at the beginning of this walk and talk? And I you know, looked right at him. I wasn't scared of him, but he, you know, he was yelling and saying things where some people would have been scared. And I'm coming up to another guy right now who's pretty crazy. He's walking in traffic. So those are the people you gotta be careful about. So anyways, so how are you guys doing today? 
I hope good. I'm doing pretty good. I just went to a, a mold inspection. Man, I, I posted the video and the pictures on uh, Gnostic Warrior Timeline, and I wanted to show you the type of homes that I go into and what mold creates. And, you know, this was a, a middle-class family, and, and they were losing their minds, and their kids were going crazy. And they literally had mold and water damage all throughout their house, everywhere. And, you know, they let it go on for a long period of time. And I go into this house, and these are the homes I go into. And I'm like, I, I don't like going into them, guys, because they're dangerous. I feel, you know, they're more dangerous than the night with Marilyn Manson or something, right? But in any event, it's this insanity. There was toys, there was crap, there was food. It was just filthy and disgusting. And I feel it was not the result of them but what the mold did to their minds over time and the filth and what it created and they were just a typical middle class white you know family so and then I have to go into these places and remediate them destroy them and clean them out so yeah, I'm getting to the point where I'm not wanting to go into these homes for that reason. Thinking about morphing my business into doing essentially only virtual inspections. You know, going into the pit of the belly in, in these people's homes and breathing in these spirits, these demonic spirits in these, these homes. And these, these people will flip these homes too. And then this home will become another person's home where the kids are unsuspecting, you know, and thinking they're going to get this nice home when they're getting this, this filth and these, these fungi and then they get sick, like what happened to my son, right? So what I'm starting to realize, guys, and I've been doing this a while, you know, and if you've looked, at, you know, listen to my walk and talks and I've been doing, you know, mold inspections and mold remediation for several years now. I'm to the point now, I'm almost gonna get out of the business that most of these homes I go into, they need to be leveled. They need to be destroyed. And it's sad, you know, but it's, it's a fact, you know, and I need to be more honest with what's really going on out there and the reality of the, the world that we're living in and what it's causing. And it just, it makes me sad, you know, like I was at this house. If you look at the video, it's on the Gnostic Warrior timeline. It, I show you pictures of my inspection. And then there's a video of the guy talking as I'm kind of videoing the damage. And you can see and listen to him and also see the filth in his house and also the mold and what it creates. So anyways, I'm going to keep walking down here. As you can see, there's pretty much not many people out here for business and then make my way back to my car and try to give people some, you know sometimes I'll move out of the way and stop talking because there's someone by but nearby but make my way back to my van if I could find it yeah so yeah there's another guy that he thought I was videotaping him but because as I'm holding this up with my, my arm, you can see I have this right here. So I have this stick that I carry around with me. That's kind of my stick. And then some people think, you know, because I'm holding it up, as you can see me here, maybe in the window, or more right here, there was someone right there. Uh, maybe you can't. <laughs> So wow, this is one of the, the busiest places that I've seen thus far, the Breakfast uh, Republic. Obviously they're doing good, they've got some good food there. Um, busiest place, I think, in the whole San Diego. <laughs> so they must got some good breakfast, um, or people are just waking up. Hmm, that's a thought, right? Because no one's working. You know, that's what I'm finding out, you know, and I wanted to talk about that a little briefly here. I've been looking for people, and this is one of the reasons I want to shut down my, my mold remediation company. I can't find anybody, any employees. And when I do find someone, you know, they lie, they, they rip me off, 
they steal and I have to fire them. So I'm in a quandary right now where I have an ad out for looking for people, help wanted, like several other people like myself who own service business in San Diego or construction companies or restaurants or whatever. And you know what? We can't find anybody. No one wants to, to work. And when someone applies, they literally reply like they're texting their freaking two-year-old. You know, you still hiring? And it's like you, the letter U, still hiring. They don't even say hello. You know, they don't say anything. These are the type of people that I literally just delete their messages. You know, so we have this crisis, right? But no one wants to work. They just want to eat. They want to eat breakfast at one o'clock, right? So anyways, again, this kind of shows you no, one, no one's around here in San Diego. And if you buy down here during the, the bubble, I think you're pretty foolish because this is a seller's market. This isn't a buyer's market, all right? They don't have a buyer's and a seller's market at the same time, guys, right? So I know there's going to be people that watch this video that like are wanting to buy real estate right now and they're so like sold on the idea and then Mo's saying these things that are maybe hurting their feelings, but I really don't care because I'm warning you it's not a great idea to buy. You're buying at the top of a bubble at the height of a bubble and it's a seller's market. So that means you're gonna pay top dollar for your home. And if this bubble pops or the tidal wave, it goes down, your value, your property can go down 100,000, 200, 300,000 in one or two years. That doesn't feel too good when you buy a home for 700,000 and then it's only worth like 300,000 by the time you're done, right? So. Anyways, yeah, once in a while, uh, again, I'll go a little bit quiet because there'll be a, someone that is a little questionable on their sanity, and uh, I don't want to be too loud. That's what I also noticed, too, is with crazy people, if you're loud, they're going to start looking at you and you're going to attract them, right? So that's what you don't want. So you'll see kind of I go in and out. And that is the main reason, because I do talk a little bit loud. And uh, that's when I notice they, they're staring at me. All right, I'm coming up to 9th and G. So I'm kind of going near my, my van. It's 1230 again on this Tuesday. Hey, it's Mo the Gnostic Warrior on this philosophical walk and talk, and also an economic walk and talk. I'm talking about the economy, what's happening down here in San Diego what's going on with the businesses, what's going on with the real estate, and also the accompanying homeless zombie apocalypse. And we're gonna go there again right now, because I'm starting, you see? This is the downtown area, right? 9th G Street, and then I'm gonna start going towards F, and then there's 10th Street. So the, the more you go down, 9th, 10th, 11th, etc the further you get away from the downtown market area and you know the beach, the harbor area. So this is where, of course, you start seeing the homeless encampments start right about 9th and 10th Street. Okay, this is where they kind of keep them on the outskirts of the downtown area here in San Diego. You know, I'm not really a downtown type of guy. I actually live in a rural area since I've moved here. I've always been more of a rural guy. I would prefer to live outside of the city rather than downtown, even though I gotta come down here for my work, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, it takes me sometimes about an hour to get to here, to live where I wanna live, but you see I'm getting my packages, there's some crime happening. I, I bet it's gonna get, get worse and worse as time goes by. So I'm gonna again show you some more of the, the homeless and wish me some luck here. If you guys wanna go down the dark side, I'm gonna do about five to 10 more minutes of this walk and talk where I show you a little bit more of the homeless. And again, as I had said here in downtown San Diego, they keep it pretty much, you know, 9th to 10th street downtown in order to, you know, keep them away from the businesses and so forth. So. You'll see as we go downtown, like here on my left, that's where they start. They're also 
down that way as well. And you just wanna, you wanna be careful. And these are actually more of the nicer ones because there's a lot more. See, as you can see down here, and then also here, this is kind of where, remember where I started, right? So we're gonna keep kind of going down these ways so I could show you what's happening. If you're looking into San Diego real estate or you wanna know what's going on, get a little education from someone who knows a little bit about real estate. Again, the last real estate crisis we had was in 2007, 2008, and everybody was buying, it was a, a frenzy. And then all of a sudden the market fell out and all those property values fell down and everybody was left holding the bag and then it started this just massive foreclosure crisis and then an unemployment crisis had happened. And that, you know, real estate and foreclosure crisis happened for about four to five years where people were losing their homes, but people have a short memory, right? You have all these real estate propagandists and these investors acting like, you know, hey, it's going great in downtown San Diego. You know, there's, the values are going up. You want to buy. That don't make sense. You don't want to buy when it's a seller's market. You don't want to buy when it's at the top of a market. And then you don't want to buy when there's an economic crisis happening. God, I just like, are you guys insane? You know, where did you guys learn about economics? Did you guys ever learn about real estate crises? in real estate bubbles and what happens with those? I don't think people do. So yeah, I'm going past the, the library downtown. And this is also another area where there's a lot of homeless as well. And uh, sometimes I wanna be careful because there was a lot, right? So when there's a lot, um, it's not wise because then you're going to get people that are more brave, right? And that's when it gets more dangerous when you have a lot more people. So the more people you have, the more mental illness, then the more risk you have of something going wrong or one of those guys try to get crazy and then they all kind of get in on it. Good news is I know martial arts, one. Number two... I'm pretty damn fast. <laughs> so I probably would run before I get into it with some crazies, just in case they had a knife or a weapon, right? So that's what people need to understand too, is because you can know martial arts and that does not mean anything when someone has a, a weapon. So most martial artists and, you know, masters will teach you, you know, if you're avoid confrontation at all cost, you know, and especially with mentally deranged people, you know, because you never know if they're going to have a weapon and stab you real quick, right? If you know martial arts, that's definitely going to, going to help you, but it doesn't mean it's going to save your life, right? So I'm going to go past one right now. Hopefully it'll be cool. And then I'm going to walk back to my van and call it a day. So yeah, again, downtown San Diego, this is where it's happening, the apocalypse, and it will keep happening because this is where we live, right? So all right, yeah, I just walked past them and another, for the most part, they seem pretty, pretty cool. Just hanging out. Yeah, so this is right here, C and 9th Street. Downtown, another business shut down right here. Closed down. Yeah, once you get to here, you'll see this is a big Bank of America commercial building. Literally, I would say 90% of that building, 95% is unoccupied right now. You know, and probably half a, mil, half a billion dollar building, you know? So, this is the tram going by, which some people take here in San Diego. And you can see kind of 
down here as well. And then also down here, not many people out, not much going on other than homeless and no businesses. So again, I'm calling it, this is a bubble right now. Um, if you buy, it's, it's stupid. It's going to get crazy. I feel we're in a depression. You know, why do I feel we're in a depression? I mean, look at the suicide rates. Look at the drug use, drug rates. I mean, everything is telling you the other, the only thing that's like we're putting lipstick on a pig right now. You know, it's because we have these, these moratoriums and then also these social programs. And people, you know, they always talk about socialism, you know, and they cry about it. We live in a socialist country, guys, right? I mean, literally, there would be millions of people on the street right now if it wasn't for all these moratoriums and these free programs. I mean, literally, even these people that own these restaurants and these people that were working six months or a year ago, if they didn't have these socialist programs in place, they would be homeless. But no, they're eating at home. They don't want to work. They don't want to apply for my job and actually do labor, right? That's why. That's what it creates. And this is the world that we live in. And they're not going to stop it. So the people that work have to pay the high taxes to pay for the people that don't work that are basically, you know, living on the dole. And that is the world that we live in. And it's going to continue to be this way. So don't buy real estate is the message. Start some type of business that's essential or go, excuse me, go work for one. Um, service businesses, stuff like that. And then um, anywhere downtown like this is crazy to live or crazy to buy property. You know, the last place I think you want to do that would be here because of the crime. And then also it's at a we're in a bubble status right now. So, you know, rural places will be safer, but that doesn't mean they're gonna be, you know, there's gonna be no crime in those areas, you know, cause this is gonna get worse and worse, this depression. You know, again, when this bubble pops and these people lose their homes and these high rises as well, where are they gonna go? What are they gonna do with all these things? I mean, I just, I, like, I, I think further, every time I ask these questions, I just keep asking more and more questions, you know, because what happens when you have a moratorium and you don't have to pay your rent, that rent is still due at the end of that moratorium, essentially, because your landlord can't pay his mortgage. He's depending on you for that money. So this is basically creating this, this effect where not only are people that are on, you know, the average blue collar worker, or the middle class, but you also have the landlord class, the, the fake aristocracy that I sometimes call them. They're going to lose their shorts when this is all said and done. They're worried, too, you know, and they're not going to get any rent when this is all done. Who's going to fill in these vacancies if they have to kick out their tenants? You know, once these foreclosures start, no one's working. No one's making enough money. So that's why I'm calling this the, the real estate San Diego apocalypse. It's going to get worse and it's going to create a worse zombie apocalypse, guys. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Gnostic Warrior. My name is Mo. Hit that like button, please. Tell me where you're from. Hit the share button. And of course, hopefully I don't get hit. And I just accidentally walked across the street. I wasn't paying attention. Um, and I think the police officer that was right there wasn't too happy. Um, so hopefully he doesn't give me a ticket. But anyways, I got to work my way back that way because that's where my van is. So thank you again for tuning in to this episode of The Gnostic Warrior. I appreciate you so much. Have a great day. Be safe out there. And don't become homeless. Be smart at what you do. All right, guys, take care. Appreciate you. Bye.